for this position right. today, we are doing third base. This is a category where we look at the risk and say, this is not a high risk here and there could be a high reward. And that's the sleepers. Who do you have for your sleepers? I have a couple, you have a couple, go ahead. Yeah. The first one I will touch on is Michael Garcia, um, third baseman for the Kansas city Royals. He's currently going around pick 232, 230 ish, um, which I think is only going to go up. He, he does everything well from a fantasy perspective and he's going to get playing time, right? Nobody is pushing him out of the way in Kansas city at third base. Um, he's getting playing time with a much better team, right? The, the Royals are getting better. Um, and I think they're going to be a sneaky, good team. I think they could compete. I'm going to say it. Maybe they could compete in the, um, the AL central if they make a couple more moves, but I think they're a very good team, but Michael Garcia, he hits the ball hard, which is exactly what you want to see. Um, and he has a terrific launch angle. So, um, if he, or like he, he, sorry, I was reading my notes for Duran. He has a good launch angle, but if he raises it just a little bit, he's going to explode. Um, Michael Garcia, he is fast. He's shown the willingness to run. He had 23 steals and 123 games last year. So he, he feels like a guy who like he hits the ball hard. He hits line drives. He's got a high floor. But if he is able to raise that launch angle a little bit, I mean, I just think he's going to explode. He's going to be worth a top 150 pick next year. Michael Garcia going around 230. I'd be willing to take him under 200. I think he's that good. And who is your second one? Yeah, my second one, which I accidentally hinted at um, a moment ago, is Ezekiel Duran. So the reason why I think this pick makes so much sense now, I don't know if you've been following, but Corey Seager is looking like he may not be ready for opening day. Josh yeah, so Young. I saw that. I was going to ask you that on the last episode. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, and then another one that just happened over the last couple of days, Josh Young looks like he's going to miss the first few weeks. Um, this is a perfect spot for Duran. Duran last year was phenomenal when he played. The only problem is he just there's so much talent in that Texas organization that it's hard for him to get playing time. But that's really his only thing keeping him from being a fantasy beast. And now I and think he's, he has his eligibility, which is great. So, yeah. That- yeah, second. He played a lot. I, I feel like he played mostly outfield last year for them. Yeah, so I want to say a lot of um, left field um, before Evan Carter especially came up. Um, but yeah, third base, shortstop, and outfield eligible. That's huge. He's going at pick 360. That is way too low for him, especially now that Jung is out. I would be jumping all over that. I mean, his price should go up probably 50 picks. My only concern would be when Jung comes back, is Duran going to get bumped out again? But I'm not that worried about it because it just takes one injury or even with nobody being injured. I mean, he's so versatile. Like we just talked about, he could exactly. just cycle in and, and get enough playing time for it not to matter. So, um, I mean, he hits the ball hard, just like Michael Garcia. He's got a good sprint speed, high floor hit 276 and 122 games. Like he's just, he's a stud waiting to happen. People are probably already tired of me talking about the Yankees, but he was part of the Joey Gallo trade, if I'm not mistaken. So, Let's yeah, see, I, Yankees, I, I think he, I know he was in the Yankees organization. I think it was the Gallo yeah, trade. It was drafted. one of those trades. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. It was one of those freaking trades. Um, it is third base, and I know I'm sure we'll hit on him a little bit later, but Jung, how does that adjust? How does that change what your feelings are on him going into the season? This injury, where does that put him, especially if he misses, I don't know, a month, right? Yeah, it's it's tough. It definitely drops his price down and it makes me adjust my ratings um, as to what I have here because, I mean, we just don't know how much time we're going to see him miss. And this is the second year in a row that he's had an injury last year was, um, you know, he dealt with some shoulder stuff and, you know, now this, the you know, the calf, like, I'm not going to call him, you know, he's not injury prone. These things happen. It's kind of worrisome to me a little bit, but um, yeah, it drops him. It drops him quite a bit. I just... I don't know if I want to have him sit on my IR for the first month. So, you know, if somebody had already drafted him, it's not the end of the world. But, yeah, I would probably avoid him for for quite a bit um, if, if you can. 
All right, that, that's fair, that, and it's tough. It, it's always tough when you have a guy you're like, oh, when he comes back, he's supposed to be great, and then you're sitting, and the, the timeline is unknown. So as we get closer to opening day, if there becomes a more clear timetable, obviously that adjusts you know, that. So I don't want to you know put everything out there right now and say, oh, don't draft. And we'll talk about it. We'll talk about I'm sure we'll talk more about injuries as we get closer to draft days for people as they're coming up closer to the season. Right now, we're very early on in camp, haven't even played a single spring training game yet. My sleepers... And they're two very different sleepers. One is Alec Bohm, who I think is going like 150, uh, I saw, something like that. Mm -hmm. And he's a guy who had, I think, 98 RBIs last year. He's going to have production, and he doesn't kill you in the rest of the categories. He could hit 20, 25 homers. He could bat close to 300. So he's not killing you in other categories. And in that lineup, which is also a very good lineup, he drove in 98 last year. There's no reason to think he's not going to drive in close to another 100 runs this year. So to get that kind of production late in a draft, if you're talking about, I don't know, 10th round, 12th round, where you're getting that kind of production from a guy like Alec Baum, that's that's a great pick in my opinion. Yeah, I like it. Yeah. And then and the other one I have. Yeah, go ahead. And he's first base eligible. I was just going to throw that on there, right? Yes. I like, I, I, I like that I, dual I, eligibility. I meant to mention that. he. So I saw that he is the consensus ranked 15th as, thir as a third baseman and ranked 19th as a first baseman. But to me, it's like, well, you combine those two and you have, you know, you're getting a pretty good player there where you could put him at either spot, put him in the corner infield. All of a sudden you're looking at a guy who's eligible at three different spots in, a, in your standard fantasy roster. The next guy is not a guy who's under the radar. Like, so Bohm, I think is just an under the radar guy. That would be a good guy to have. The other guy, I think a lot of people are talking about him but it really relies on him taking the next step. So he could be a sleeper depending on if your people you're drafting with are not super high on him, but you really are depending on him taking the next step. And that's key. Brian Hayes. A lot of people think he's going to take that next step and develop. I had him the second half of the season last year. I thought he did take that step. He was looking better, but on a, on a very bad team, which is something we also talk about all the time that we like to avoid bad teams, bad lineups. I don't know how much of an opportunity there's going to be for him to take that next step. Uh, what are your thoughts on him, on Cabrian Hayes? Um, the one thing, too, I just thought about that I wanted to mention on Boehm real quick that I think it's lost is we look at a lot of guys and we look at power and speed. And Boehm, he's not the most powerful hitter. He's not, you know, he's, he's definitely a high batting average kind of player. But you mentioned he's in a great lineup, 97 RBIs. Like, he's going to get counting yeah. stats, and so I think that's extremely important. And, and that's what I was talking about, that. Yeah, that production. Yep. Yep. Those that very often gets overlooked because we want the guy who's going to hit 40 home run. You know, th that just doesn't happen. It's so. rare that you'll have a guy who's not hitting the home runs and still getting the RBIs to that yep. extent. Like 97 RBIs with, well, what do you have? Only 20 home runs last year is, right. is impressive. And you mentioned Cabrian Hayes. I think that's a good pick. I, <laughs> and I think this is maybe the, the dynasty prospect fatigue feeling. I have been waiting for a Cabrian Hayes breakout for three, four years now. And so did the guy who drafted him in my league last year that I ended up taking hit off his hands. You know what I mean? And he had a phenomenal finish, right? Like, yeah, that's what I'm saying. He clicked. I, I got him in the second half when he played really well. I was like, well, thanks for this, buddy. You know, because yeah, because he was fed up. And this was a guy who had been tracking him for so many years. All right. This is the year. This is the year. But then something clicked in the second half. And sometimes that carries over more. You know, we talked about earlier guys who just come up for the second half and, and play really well. Sometimes a guy who played a full season, but all of a sudden something clicked for them. That's the guy who all of a sudden you want to look at the next year. Yeah, it was really interesting. So just looking at some of his numbers, he he, the thing with Hayes was always like he hits the ball so hard. He's just got to raise the launch angle. And he did, but it, he still only got 15 home runs. Um, his speed looks like it fell off a little bit last year. His hit tool is okay. And the production's not there just because of the lineup he's in. Yeah, and you're absolutely right. But a 92 mile an hour average exit velocity is phenomenal. So he just he hits the ball so hard. Good things are going to happen. But because where's where does where does he going right now? Let's see. Um, I have him about 172. I think that's yeah. a fair price. Um, I, I, he definitely feels like a floor play. Like he has a great glove. He's going to play every day. You know the team's not great around him. So yep. Um, you know he's not losing playing time. So. Yeah, I think that's a good value for him, but definitely could shoot up if he is able to kind of put it together just a little bit more.